Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. As we look back on our past few readings, and we could actually go all the way back to Solomon for this, but just in our past few readings, we've seen a lot of kings arise in Judah who were good kings, and we've seen a lot of kings arise in Judah who were bad kings. And they almost seem to alternate to some extent. Uh, we could go back to Uzziah, who was a really good king, but the prosperity and the success that the Lord gave him through his righteousness actually caused him to be prideful. And uh, there was a moral decline towards the end of Uzziah's reign. But then his son Jotham took over and he was a good king and um, did what was right in the, in the eyes of the Lord. And then Jotham had a son Ahaz, who was a bad king. And the Lord ends up disciplining him uh, along with the people of Judah. And uh, and he just ends up being a, a bad king altogether. But then Ahaz has Hezekiah, who it seems to be one of the, the the top kings of Judah. He wasn't perfect, but he was definitely a person who led reforms, um, led people back to the worship of God, uh, particularly the Passover. But Hezekiah uh, was a good king. But then his son Manasseh took over, and he was considered one of the most evil kings that Judah ever had, even though later on he comes to uh, repent and lead some reforms, the damage that he had done uh, in, to some extent was irrevocable. And so Manasseh uh, started out really evil, kind of tried to change his ways towards the end. And then uh, his son took over, Amon, uh, Amon uh, who was also a wicked king and didn't reign for very long, for about two years and then you have Josiah taking over as we read today and he brings great reform to uh, the people of Judah and reestablishes things he even extends it out to the people of Israel uh, the northern part of Israel uh, which is no longer a nation anymore but he extends it out to the people living in that area and so time and time again we see uh, Judah following the Lord and then an evil king comes and then they follow after idols, and then a good king comes, and they're back serving the Lord. And this back and forth of uh, being faithful to the Lord, but then uh, being unfaithful to the Lord. And in all of these situations, we see that in all these cases, there were basically two things that happened. An undoing of certain things, and then uh, uh, an implementing of some things. Whenever a good king would arise, he always had to get rid of those idols. He had to cleanse the temple. He had to do repairs to uh, the temple. He had to, to cleanse the land of the idols uh, and, all, and that sort of thing. And then establish worship again, get people back on track as far as worshiping the true God. Um, again, repairing the temple, getting it uh, back to where it was before. But when a bad king came, the same thing would happen. They would... Uh, leave the temple in disarray. They would forsake the law of God, forsake the ways of God, and follow after idols and, and replace God, the worship of God with the worship of idols. And so, through it all, there's always this doing away with one thing and replacing it with the other, whether it's replace, uh, doing away with something good, or replacing it with something bad, or vice versa. In our lives, it's the same thing. The same thing is true with us. We too are in this constant battle over what are we going to do away with in our lives and what are we going to implement in our lives. And every day we wake up, we really have to make this decision. It's not a decision that we just make when we come to Christ, although that does take place in a huge way when we come to Christ. But it's also something that we have to decide on every single day. What are some things in my life that I'm going to do away with? And what are some things that I'm going to implement in my life? I'm either going to do away with bad things, stumbling blocks, those things that are hindering, hindering me, the sin that so e uh, easily entangles us. Uh, are, are these the things we're going to do away with so that we can fix our eyes on Christ and run the race that's set before us? Or is the opposite going to be true? Are we going to do away with what we know about Christ? Are we going to uh, put aside... Uh, a life of faithfulness towards God and being wholly given to him and replace that with 
other things, the things of the world, the love of the things of the world, um, replacing it with perhaps uh, uh, other things that run into contrast with that, uh, involving ourselves in sin, uh, creating idols in our own hearts, whether it be money or our careers or education, um, things that we might replace God with, things that maybe aren't bad in and of themselves, but we use those to replace God. Each and every day, we got to make a decision of what's going to go out and what's going to come in. And uh, each and every day, hopefully, we will make the decision that the things that will go out are the things that are hindering our spiritual life, the things that are tripping us up, the things that have become stumbling blocks, the things that hinder us, uh, the things that entangle us. Those are the things that we should be continually purging ourselves of. And it's not just a life of getting rid of things, but a life of implementing things where we say, you know what? And now I'm going to replace those things with God, a, re a relationship with God, uh, an established relationship with God in which I love him above everything else. I put him first above everything else. And he becomes the center of our lives as we have that attitude. So today, let's follow the example of the good kings. Let's follow the example of Josiah that we read about today and purge ourselves of the things that are distracting us, that are getting us away from a, a true relationship with God and reach ahead and, and, and pull in close those things that draw us near to the Lord and further establish our relationship with him. So with that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.